Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte Black Hat Edition. I'm Corey Nockreiner, and today I'm talking about the latest car hacking techniques. At Black Hat last week, I attended a presentation by Charlie Miller and Chris Valasek on their latest advanced CAN network injection techniques. Now, you might recognize those researchers' names. They became known for car hacking. These are the two guys that were able to hack the Jeep Cherokee remotely, and they actually did it while a wired journalist was driving the car. Now, this was remote vulnerability, which they could hijack over cellular networks. They of course continued their research after that and found other ways they could exploit the CAN network. And by the way, CAN stands for Controller Area Network. This is the network that a car's ECUs or electronic computer units use to communicate with one another. And by the way, there's a ton of ECUs in your car that controls all kinds of things from braking to steering and other things like that. In any case, they explored how they could actually send messages on this network in one of their second presentations had to do with some of the automated driving controls that we've added to cars, things like automatic parking or assisted braking. Once we started adding these digital controls to physical steering and braking, this allowed the two researchers to actually start to control those functions. Now, one of the things you may not have known about their research was to exploit these things, uh, Charlie Miller and Chris Velasek had to use diagnostic messages on the CAN network. And a lot of car manufacturers have a fake safe which only allows these messages to work if the car is traveling under five miles an hour. This means a lot of their exploits would not work if the car was traveling quickly, so they really aren't that dangerous. This year's presentation essentially had to do with how these researchers overcame that five mile per hour limit. You see, the whole problem has to do with what the researchers call message confliction. Your car's computers or ECUs are constantly sending messages to one another. So if a hacker tries to send a fake message from an ECU, and then the car also receives a real message from the ECU that says something totally different, that's a conflict. And car manufacturers have implemented fail-safes where if it sees too many conflicting messages, it's going to shut that system down as a fail-safe. And this is really what prevented the researchers from doing anything really bad while the car was at speed. However, this year's research shows how they overcame that. Basically, they found out two things. One, it takes more than one conflict for a car to shut down. That means if they only send one false message and they time it right, they can actually get past this particular failsafe. So Charlie Miller created this sort of timing attack where he had sent one false message in the proper sequence right before the real ECU's message. And since it was only one false message, it didn't actually trigger the system shutdown, but since it always received the hacker's message first, this allowed the hacker to do what he wanted. On top of that, the researchers found another way that they could really take over for an ECU. Essentially, using diagnostic messages, they could put a ECU into a boot mode and tell it to reprogram itself while your car was actually driving. And by the way, if their ECU is reprogramming itself, it's not sending legitimate messages, so this allows the hacker to send any message he wants, and he could even properly uh, reflash the ECU right after this attack if he wanted to, to keep the car intact. Anyways, all technical details aside, these new advanced CAN injection techniques allowed the researchers to actually automatically turn your car even if it was driving at speed, 60 miles an hour or more. So this is a pretty dangerous vulnerability. Now the good news is these are responsible researchers. They've communicated with the manufacturer to get these issues fixed. The only practical takeaway, by the way, is if you ever receive an update for your car or a recall, you should probably do it because it could be a security vulnerability. By the way, besides this presentation, I attended two car hacking presentations at the DEF CON security conference, and they even had a CAN network hacking lab in their contest section. So there's a lot of car research going on at this year's security conferences. One last aside, because I'm talking about Black Hat stuff, I'm skipping Microsoft patch day today, but if you're a Microsoft Microsoft administrator, you should remember that today is both Microsoft and Adobe patch day. Microsoft, I know, has released nine security bulletins fixing vulnerabilities. Five of them are rated as critical bulletins, so be sure to go get your patches. That's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.